we have one more piece of our spherical coordinates to figure out, and that's the dv. We've done dA. Now it's time for dv. Um, so let's draw it up here. I <clears throat> You start by drawing the same DA that you had last time, curved on all sides. But then you turn it into a cube. And there we go. A cube. And you have to remember that these two here emanate from the origin. Actually, these three. Did we already do DV? DA. We did DA, OK. <clears throat> well, since we already did DA, you remember two of these sides, right? What was this arc length on the side there? Let your notes from yesterday. Theta. Say it again. D theta. E, almost. That's part of it. What's the rest of it? D theta. R d theta. R d theta. You feel like a pirate. R. But uh, so here's your. Uh, this is your d theta here. Mm -hmm. But then to get that arc length, you need to multiply it by the radius. Right. So it's. It's r d theta. And then this one was the horribly hard one. Do you remember what that one was? That's what your gut wants to say. I look at that and I say, yes, r d phi, but no, that's wrong. Yes. It's r sine theta d phi. Because you're right, it, this, this angle here is d phi, almost. Because remember, phi has to go along the xy plane. So what we have to do is drop a perpendicular here. I'll use a different color for that. And so this becomes our arc length. And then that, that right there, that's d phi, not this. Because d phi has to be, and so then this side here is not r, it's r sine theta. So this side here is r sine theta d phi. And that's this side is that side. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Well, there's only one more side left now. And that's this one right here. What's that? An infinitesimal piece of. It's an infinitesimal piece of R. So it, goes, it emanates right from the center there. It's just a straight line out there. So this is a small piece of that. We might call it dr. So when we write this out, dv is equal to r squared sine theta <coughs> dr d theta d phi. And our coordinates are r theta phi. And the unit vectors are r hat, theta hat, and phi hat. How y'all doing? Does this kind of make sense? In uh, making your 3D brain function that way? What is the spherical coordinates in general in data mean? So yeah, it takes a little while to get used to. Thinking in either cylindrical or spherical coordinates is a bit of a trick. It really, you have to make your mind go that way. It's not easy. <clears throat> well, since our minds aren't oriented to doing this yet, 
let's do a good challenging problem that'll force our brains to go that way. Uh, can I erase this? Y'all got it? Okay, here it goes. It's gone now. That was the last class. Elastic collisions. You were having elastic, I am. Yep. <sighs> yeah. We need the volume of this thing. What a funny looking shape. What is that thing? <laughs> it does. It looks like a lamp cover. <laughs> Can I erase this DV now? Yeah, that looks like what you put on your lamp. Lampshade. That's a, la a lampshade. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, we need the volume of that lampshade. Oh, man. What a pain in the neck. Okay. We have... Three choices, Cartesian, cylindrical, spherical. What is that most like? This most looks like a cylinder, right? Mm -hmm. So let's use cylindrical, okay? So uh, <clears throat> here's the order of operation that you're gonna wanna step through when you do this. Uh, First of all, as usual, find the, oh, and I, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. The question is not, what's the volume? The question is, where's the centroid? Which is worse. <clears throat> so start with, find the volume. Well, how do you do volume? Well, you start with, volume is equal to integral dv. Right? That's what, that's what we're going to have to do, right? Integral. Okay, volume is equal to integral dv, always. The question then becomes, what's dv? And we already decided we're using cylindrical, so what are we going to use? Y'all should have it in your notes. That's, that's spherical. We're going to use cylindrical. What's dv going to be in cylindrical coordinates? Easy. Yeah, uh, well, I have it written down here. Yeah, rho, d phi, dz, d... Rho, d rho, d phi, dz. That's, that's what dv becomes. <coughs> okay. Well now, here's the giant challenge. What are the limits of that integral? So when I write this out here, this is gonna turn into three integrals. Rho, d rho, d phi, dz. I need the limits of each of these. What are those limits? Where is rho gonna go from and to? Do you remember that in cylindrical coordinates? Where does rho always start? It always starts from the z-axis. Are there two z-axis? Nope. Oh. <laughs> so, yes, thank you for pointing this out. Just see this picture here? There's like a y. A little z and a big z. It's like mama bear and papa bear or something. What happened? Okay, so here's what's going on. In cylindrical coordinates, it's always like this. Z, X, Y. Z always has to be along the axis of symmetry. 
in cylindrical coordinates, always. When this was in your textbook, engineers like to have y going up and they put an x over here. So I put a z there. Why did I put a z there? Because I need z to be the axis of symmetry to use cylindrical coordinates. Do you see that? So step one is to take the picture from the book and make the coordinates match what you know. Cylindrical coordinates have to have z going down the axis of symmetry. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Kind of? So I, I, re -or I turned it from x into z just so that I can, so it can match up with cylindrical coordinates. Otherwise, you can't use this. You've got to make something else up. This is hard enough to come up with as it is. I don't want to make something else, something new up. Yo, does that kind of make sense to everybody? And I'm glad you noticed that, Mary Gordon. Okay, so where's rho? Remember, in our, I'll, since I have this drawn here, I'll, I'll put it up here again. <clears throat> Remember rho, if our point's out here, rho goes straight from the axis to the edge, okay? So what are our limits on d rho, what are they gonna be? From zero to the edge of this thing, right? But it tells us right up here, right up there, what's the edge of the thing? That's that equation. But there's a catch here, because I didn't change that part of the book. This is what the book says. How should I put it over here? Say it again. Why z? I changed the x-axis to a z. So we're no longer talking about x's, now we're talking about z's. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay, because here's what this says. As you go out this z-axis, that shape gets steeper and steeper because it's a parabola. So as z increases, the shape gets steeper. So this goes from zero, from the center, because that's where rho always goes from, to 0.167 z squared. Does that make sense to everybody? What about phi? Where's that gonna go from and to? Now remember, on your coordinate system here, if you drop this thing down here to the xy plane, put this on here like this, then uh, <clears throat> phi measures from the x-axis over to that row. So where do I want it to go? I want it, it's, it's a complete circle, right? It's not piece of a circle, it's the whole thing. So I'm going to draw that line and then I'm going to rotate it around. Okay? So it's going to go all the way around. Now Z. Where's Z going to go from and to? Sorry, it's kind of a small picture there. It was bigger a second ago. Say it one more time. The ending is right. Why do we want it to go from 0.75 to 1.5? Yeah, let me go back a picture so you can see. Oops, other way. You see that? If we go from 0 to 1.5, that's going to make this shape go the whole way. But we don't want it to go, we only want, we want it to start here, which is at the point 0.175. So it starts here and goes to there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it was hard to see because it was small. Okay, are y'all kind of following with how we came up with these limits? Okay. 
Well, I think I, that's, I think I wrote this right here. Set up the integral. There we go. Yep, that's what we did. Now we do the integral. Oh, all right. Y'all talk me through it here. We've done these a handful of times already. We should be getting good at this now. Do this integral first. What's that orange integral? Oh, the rest of it stays the same, right? So I'm, gonna not, I'm not touching anything else. 0.75 to 1.5, 0 to 2 pi. What do I put in the middle where this orange box was? 1.67 z cubed over 2. Yeah, how about I, how I work this out right over here? Okay, so let's see. This would be rho squared over 2 with those limits, right? 0 to 0.167 z squared. Now I plug that in. I plug this into rho and subtract this plugged into rho. Y'all remember how this goes here? So I'm going to have 0.167 z squared over 2 squared minus 0 squared over 2. <coughs> And that's what I'm going to put in the middle here, because that's where my orange box was. Okay, so uh, what's 0.167 squared? Somebody want to punch that out for me? Point, uh, 0.279z to the 4 over 2 d phi dz. Okay, you'll see how I got here. Okay, now we're going to do this integral. What, is, is z a function of phi? No. No? What about 2? <laughs> no. All this stuff in here is just a constant with respect to this integral. So I'm going to pull it out of the orange integral, but I'm not going to take it out altogether. Why can't I take it out altogether? Because there's still a z there, and we're going to do it in a few minutes. We're going to do a z integral, and that's got to stay there for that. But I can pull the numbers out. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, Reagan, as long as you have that in your calculator, can you divide that by two for me? Point zero one three nine. Okay, now I'm going to have this integral 0.75 to 1.5. And now, uh, oh, and my z squared, my z to the 4 is still there. Now what goes in here for that integral? Do you all see that? Just a 2 pi. Because this, this is just integral, constants all out front of it, this is just integral d phi from 0 to 2 pi, which is just phi from 0 to 2 pi, which is 2 pi minus 0. And so I'm going to plug that in here, 2 pi, and now I still have my dz out here. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> well, the 2 pi can come right out front. And now I have integral z to the fourth dz. What's that going to be? Yeah, z5 over 5. OK, so this is going to be, uh, Reagan, as long as you're running the computer, what's 2 pi times this? That number you had up there just a second ago. Okay, and now we have z5 over 5 from 0.75 to 1.5. Okay, so we'll take this one more step here. So now we're going to have 0 0.8 or 0 .0, 0 0.08, 7, 6, over 5, times 1.5 to the fifth minus 0.75 to the fifth. 
There's some button pushing for you. Y'all punch that out for me. What is that? Point one two nine. And those are, it's all in meters, so this would be meters cubed. Okay, everybody happy with that triple integral? Y'all are going to ace Cal 4 now. What's that? I said, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does this make sense? Any questions? Okay, well let's see what let's see what's next here. <clears throat> Do the integral. Oh hey, that's what we got. All right. Yeah, that's one point five to the power of five minus point seven five to the power of five. Yeah, sorry, I've got chicken scratch handwriting. It's because my handwriting is so horrible. I'm sorry. <sighs> I, it, it's, it's because of where this was. When you, if you're writing up here, head and shoulder area, handwriting's okay. You get down near the belly button and handwriting just falls apart. It's just the only way to write low, just tricks of the trade. Y'all are going to have to do this, okay? Y'all are going to be writing on whiteboards. When you get write down low, the only way to have neat handwriting is to move your belly button lower. Now you can write neatly. Just throwing that out. And I, I was lazy. I just bent over. I didn't get my belly button lower. And now y'all can't read it. I even knew what to do. I just didn't do it. I've never known an engineer that actually has good handwriting. Well, there's that problem too. Yeah. Okay. It's like finding a diamond in the rock. Okay, well that was just step one. We were trying to find the centroid of this, right? And notice, when we say find centroid, what does that mean? X bar, Y bar, and Z bar. Oh, no. We gotta do this three times? This was just the denominator of the first one. <laughs> we're getting there, though. It'll actually be better than you think. Let me clear out some board space. Okay, so step two, find the numerator. Okay, well now let me ask you something. <clears throat> And I think I say this in the notes later, but let's think through it now. Um, let's see. There we go. If that's... This is nothing here, just ignore that. Okay, so there's X, Y, Z coming out of the board, okay? See the right-hand rule, X, Y, Z coming out, okay? What is, um, <clears throat> what's X bar gonna be? We don't even have to do any math. What's it gonna be? For that matter, what's Y bar gonna be? Let me rephrase the question. Where's it gonna balance? In the X direction and the Y direction? Why? Here's the fancy word. It's symmetrical. 
Ooh, that's not even all that fancy. But that's it. You don't even, this is the beauty of this. You don't even have to do the math. On your paper, you just say, by symmetry, x bar equals zero, y bar equals zero. You just look at it and say, yep, that's where it is. Now, if you don't see it, you can do the math, and that's what the math will tell you. But you don't have to do the math. You can just look at it and say, oh, yeah, it's going to be in the middle. Now, z bar, you can't do that, right? Because the balance point along the z-axis is going to be closer to this heavy end, and it's not going to be in the middle. You can't just look at it and get it, right? But the other two, you can. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, that's. So like, as a regular. If it was a normal, if it, if this was the shape, and we were finding the symmetry of this, we'd just say x bar y bar zero, and z bar. We'd know the height, and we'd say it's h over two, and we can say all that by symmetry, okay. no math necessary. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, let's find that. How are we going to find the numerator? Which numerator do we need to find? We need to find z bar. Okay, so we need to find what's, what's, this, what's this integral going to look like? So the numerator for z is going to be what? Triple integral what? Indeed. What's the rest of it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be that same rho d rho d phi dz, just like we had last time, but there's one change different. What's the one thing that has to be different now? Yeah, we've got to slap a z on there. That's it. It's the same integral now. The limits, same as before, because it's still the same shape. Nothing's changed. The only thing that changes is you put a z there. So rho is going to go from 0 to 0 0.1, what was it, six, what was it, 167? Was it 176? What is 167? 167 z squared, uh, 0 to 2 pi, and 0.75 to 1.5. First integral is not going to change, right? This integral is not going to be different than what we did last time, right? Why not? Correct. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess we got it. We got it. Beasley will be yelling at me right now. There needs to be a prime there and a prime there because you can't have the thing you're integrating over in the limits, that's just like bad math. You can't do that. But that's why it's the same. Right. But, here's, but the point is, this thing doesn't get integrated on until we get over here. Right now, we're just integrating rho. So this comes right out front, and then the thing you're left with is just what we did last time. It's the same integral again. And I don't remember what the answer was. You all should have that in your notes. What was that? <clears throat> Say it one more time. Okay, now wait. What's going to happen here? This, this, and this is where my notation gets messy. This is the same thing. Oh, but it's okay because we're not, uh, anyway, th this ends up turning into z to the 5 here. I guess what I should have done is put the prime up here, but then they're all the same. But we're not integrating over z, so it's okay. So you know what? Beasley wouldn't have yelled at me. I weren't, we weren't integrating over z yet. Okay, 
Uh, we have the d phi, dz, and then all those numbers come out, and now we have a 2 pi, so we're going to have, uh, what, were, what, what, what is 2 pi, because that's this next integral. See how the extra z in there doesn't change the 2 pi integral? It's still d phi, integral d phi. The rest of this, there's no phi in there. All of that comes right out of the integral. So we still get just a 2 pi out of, that, out of this integral. So 2 pi times this over that, and that's the same number we had last time. What is that number? Am I waving my hands too much? Let's see. 0 0.027 divided by 2 times 2 pi. What is that? Y'all see how we got here? Now is the only time that the whole integral changes. Because last time we had z4. Now we have z5. Okay, so then this becomes 0 0.0876 <clears throat> times z6 over 6 from 0.75 to 1.5. Okay, y'all okay with all that? <clears throat> There's the integral, and I think when we get the answer, what's the answer? Has anybody punched it out yet? Good, that's what I got too. Notice the units on this. It's no longer m cubed. No longer meters cubed. Now it's meters fourthed. How'd you get an extra meter out of that? Remember, because when we did the denominator, it was just meters cubed, right? It was just volume. Why is this meters to the fourth? It's because of, of that extra z that we th we just multiplied the whole thing times an extra z. What are the units of z? Meters. So you just multiplied it by another meter. So now we're going to have meters to the fourth. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So now how are we going to find z bar? Yeah. So z bar is just going to be 0.164 meters to the fourth divided by the volume, which I forgot what that was. What was that volume? meters cubed. Oh, and look at that. It's amazing how this works out. It happens every time. Meters cubed gets rid of the fourth and we're left with one meter upstairs, which is what it should be, right? Okay, so what do we get? Should be one and some change? 1.27. And, and notice what that means. That means from zero, count out 1.27. Well, here's 0.75. Here's 1.5. So, oh, it's a little bit past halfway in this thing. Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? In the units of meters. And, and for that matter, we can do x bar and y bar, right? What are those? Zero. But then you have to remember that, oh, yes, this question was in an engineering textbook, and it didn't have a z-axis there. They had an x-axis there. Let me erase some boards so you can see it. 
even though they had to use uh, cylindrical coordinates and had to make that a z to get the answer, they still call this the x-axis. So there's the answer. So you do it all with the reoriented axis so that z goes down the axis of symmetry. Then when you get done, just turn the axis back to the way the book has it so you can make them happy. And there you go. Oh, and, and this is, I put this in the notes. How do you find the other two? You just say, by symmetry, it's zero. All done. <clears throat> okay, how y'all doing? This is kind of making sense? It's kind of fun. You just get to sit there and play with integrals all day and Okay, well, what if you have a funny shaped line? So, here's what I mean. You've got a, ah, butterfingers. You've got a line, it's weirdly shaped, it's got mass, and so, like, say you've got a, I don't know, an iron bar that you bent it up, and it looks something like this. Where's its center of mass? How do we do that? Well, you do it the same way. <laughs> Use the centroid again. Nothing changes. <clears throat> There's the discrete version. If it's uniform mass distribution, and, and, and instead of mi, you can just use length if it's in chunks. If it's not in chunks, you do the continuous version. It's usually not in chunks. And I think I've got an example of this here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a trick. I forgot about this trick. This is necessary. This is huge. Y'all ready for the trick? Here it goes. <clears throat> in cylindrical, you're using either dx or dy or dz, I'm sorry, in, in Cartesian, and to approximate a triangle, you use this. So, so here's what I mean. Uh, here's your line, it's curved. Where's its center of mass? Well, what you need to do is take an infinitesimal piece of DL Is that DX or is it DY? And the answer is yes. And you use Pythagorean theorem, so you've got this 2 DX, DY, and it's both. And I think you do some algebra here rearrange that a little bit and you get that. Now how did I get from here to here? Oh sorry, this is in the way. How did I go from here to here? Just algebra. What was the algebra trick? You got it Braxton? Oh, I thought you... Say it one more time. Not quite. So, so there's their square root. Here's your square root. So we, all, all the magic happened right in here. How did I get a dx outside? Am I out of time? No, you're not. Oh, okay. I just need to put something on the corner before. Oh, that's fine. I... I go over sometimes, and so sometimes that happens to me. Like, oh no, I was supposed to quit five minutes ago. Physics is just that fun. It is. Okay, so what, how did I get this out here? Let, let's try this. <clears throat> let's multiply, send our square root over here, and multiply all this by a dx squared over a dx 
squared. Is that legal? Yes. Why is it legal? Multiply by 1, nothing changes. You're doing good. And now send the denominator in there. Do you see that? So what's dx squared over dx squared? Oh, that's just 1. And what's dx y squared over dx squared? Oh, well, that's this. Y'all see that? But now, I love this. This cracks me up. We're just doing algebra here. But this particular algebra has meaning. That means take derivative. Do you see that? And then square the answer. I love the way Newton set that up. That's just, that's just slick as snot right there. Anyway, there you go. So, uh, and, and then, what, what I do with this numerator? You'll see what happened to that? I said, oh, well, that's just squared under a square root. I'll just take that out and now it's not squared anymore. And so that's how I got from here to here. And so here's the trick you want to use when you have a curved line, which you almost always do. That's how you do this. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Y'all right? You following? He must have written something really good up there because everybody's like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, well, let's... Uh, and then, let's see, there's another trick. What's this other trick? Use known shape, namely a circle. Let me erase this. I don't remember this trick. Let's see if my notes tell us what the trick is. Okay, there's a circle. There's a piece of a circle. Oh, here's the other trick. Okay, so let me, okay. if it's just a random curve, use that trick I just showed you. If it's a piece of a circle, use this trick. And this trick is uh, turn it into cylindrical coordinates. Because look at this an infinitesimal piece of this curve. Well, isn't that just an arc length? Mm -hmm. And isn't the radius measured from the center to the edge here? Isn't that just rho? And the angle, d phi? Boy, that's a sloppy drawing. But anyway, <sighs> isn't that how it works? Just, you me to draw that drawing better? Who says that's a horrible drawing? Okay, it was a horrible drawing. That was absolutely horrible. I can't believe I did that. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, go, I'll do it up here so it's easier. Here's your arc length, DL. Here's the center over here. And this angle is D phi. And this side is rho. So the arc length is rho D phi. Okay, well, with that said, we've got 30 seconds to do this problem, which isn't enough time to get the surface scratched, so we'll quit. We'll pick up here after Easter. <laughs>